for the 2-0, and they've locked themselves a playoff spot. Guardians, first time in the organization's history, they will make the playoff. That's it, the LCS regular season is over, and now it's time for playoffs. Welcome, everyone, to Esports in 30. I'm Bernie Moore, and this is Matt Hampstead, and today is League of Legends Day. Matt, before we welcome our very special guest, can you just give me a little bit of a recap of what we just saw over the weekend? Well, well, everyone in the LEC in Europe was absolutely chilling, just taking a week off before playoffs. The LCS was going pretty crazy in week nine, a lot on the line, some big matchups, Echo Fox against CLG, mm -hmm. basically deciding who gets in that sixth spot. Um, TSM taking down Team Liquid, so, you know, just a lot going on in these uh, situations and it all mm -hmm. determined the final six going into the LCS playoffs, so pretty uh, exciting. Yeah, uh, it was truly a crazy final week and, of course, we had a super hype tiebreaker. Let's check out that and so much more in the LCS Week 9 highlights. Lanes calling that they need help. All lanes are behind and Meteos may be getting picked off here himself. Oh, getting found in the jungle. Looking to force Whoa. here. Dokla in on the two. He's going hard with the ultimatum on the death lane. He absolutely deletes him. This could be the fight off that comes back. But though the Guardians the have their eye on priority targets. Crown's now about to go down. He gets the Chrono Shift back onto himself. Meteo's taking damage from Contracts. On the left side, he got a resurrection onto Dokla. He'll be back into the fight. But Contracts says, you are in here with me. As Guardians looking good coming into week nine. They're looking for the 2-0. And they've locked themselves a playoff spot. When that is up for Kogma, he is monstrously strong. Oh my word, Smithy not feeling good here, and Echo Fox is taking the game into their own hands. Not looking good. You can't He's just dead. get that Rek'Sai farm alarm out anymore. It's an attack. So you gotta see that respect given from Echo Fox. And in they go! Stained in one, Apollo gets hit! He gets back while Goku's on him, and now he's got three shots on impact. That's damage on the double if he gets the cleanse out. They're following through. The kill coming in for Phoenix. This looks like it could be it! As Echo Fox are rising for the victory! And now it's gonna be damage onto the Nexus turrets. Jensen Nick Smithy can only find solace on the fountain. And would you believe it? After the 2 all weekend, Echo Fox looking strong, and Echo Fox will take down Team Liquid. Looking at solo in the side lanes as Sixa can't quite kill him just yet, but Apollo gets the kill in a bio. Frosty Big Stun comes in but finds nothing of value as Arshan is pushed oh, off. The flash and Apollo's on a double kill. Low health bars, ults in for Phoenix to get a single kill picked up, but no trades. Say four versus three. CLG can only run, and they're not very good at that either, as they're gonna look to lock down even more kills. Six the only one alive. A quick stun comes out from Darshan, but shut down anyway. They're killing everybody a double, making a triple. The quadra in his eyes, he's gonna get at least the Guardian Angel. They're going for They're it. gonna go they're ahead going and try. It. They're going for the Penta. Over to Apollo. And he's gonna get it. The Penta kill to send them in the playoffs. They are seed six, and the Titan Killers will face TSM in the quarterfinals. It's TSM, so I think we can easily beat them. <laughs> so far, and now we're gonna see a fight break out here at the top side of the jungle. It's Viper going in, seeing if he can maybe keep himself alive through this one. Golden Guardian's gonna be losing some health bars as FlyQuest comes out on top. It's Ole and Contract oh and Froggen all in the ground, and FlyQuest find a free for all. But now Golden Guardians look to turn the fight right back on its head. Pobos is able to find one kill. Froggen's able to grab a killing spree, but it's still Golden Guardians going down. Froggen's in some trouble and thrown up into the air. The shutdown put it over to Wild Turtle. And we're asking, can they do it? The answer they're trying to say is yes, sir. Pobelter goes on a rampage, and Golden Guardians are going, now going to have to fight one man down. Froggen's going to be taken down to half HP. Calling's not going to find anything. Double Double kill over to P.O.B. They're looking to find even more. It's a triple. And this is FlyQuest. FlyQuest will get their revenge for earlier today. And they will take down the Golden Guardian. And FlyQuest is getting it done in the tiebreaker and locks up fourth place to break down that and everything else. LCS, let's welcome in Julian. Pastry time car. What's up, man? Nothing much. Just excited to talk about some LCS as usual. Who isn't really? Let's just start it off then with a tiebreaker game between Golden Guardians and FlyQuest. GGS won earlier in the day. How was FlyQuest able to flip the script in the tiebreaker and with an emergency substitute at that? Yeah, it was a pretty interesting game given that they had to bring in Maxi over Centaurin, mm -hmm. who was feeling a very ill apparently towards the end of the day. And in fact, I probably wasn't even feeling that great in their first game. They did actually bring their jungle sub. Uh, 
at the start of the day just in case they knew they needed to move him over. Mm -hmm. uh, honestly, I think FlyQuest just showed something that they've demonstrated throughout a lot of the season, and that's just some really good resilience. Like, they knew that, you know, they could play to the Ezreal with two items for Turtle. They knew that if they could just kind of hold out the game and stop all of the, the onslaught that GGS were bringing and use their engage well, and find good angles, then they could actually win the game. And I think they did a really good job, given the situation, just to keep playing, keep playing, and then finally find windows back into the game. So all credit to Golden Guardians for trying to make more of an early to mid game work. But I think FlyQuest in the end have proven that they're still really good as five players, and they just showed a ton of resilience in that game. Yeah, and I mean, for a lot of that game, it looked like FlyQuest was, they had their backs against the wall. And I mean, some great engages by JJ. Um, but obviously, Maxi is kind of the focus of this game. Do you think it might even be an advantage for FlyQuest to have this jungler come in? Because because for Golden Guardians, they have no information on this guy whatsoever. I mean, you have a little from Academy, and you would imagine that your coaches and stuff would be able to give you at least that. But, I mean, there is definitely potential for surprises when you're bringing in a new player. And just in general, the idea of teams bringing in more players is always nice. Even in, like, very scary moments, like I'm playing a tiebreaker game that matters to me for side selection, I think bringing in fresh blood and mixing it up can be really good. For Maxi, I think he had, like, a pretty medium game, like, nothing egregiously wrong and nothing like overly amazing but he played super solid especially given the situation he was put in and i think again a credit to flyquest for bringing in a new player at the last minute and looking like they really didn't miss too much mm -hmm. well let's uh move on here and talk about uh, golden guardians using uh, despite the result of that tiebreaker uh the guardians still had an uh, amazing finish to the split what do you think was responsible um for their much improved result oh man it's because they made so many oh, yeah. changes, it's tough to it's tough to pin down like exactly which one uh, made the difference. Yeah. I think for me, I'm guessing that however the team is like being coached and how they're feeling is the biggest difference to me. Because like that, obviously the talent they changed uh, was good, and I think teams have tried to build around Frog and in North America in the past mm -hmm. and haven't done as well. I think an era moving over who was super enthusiastic to work with the squad mattered. I think in general, just that the management changes that. Golden Guardians went through, as well as the slew of roster changes, kind of all contributed. For me, I think that Golden Guardians are filled with quite a few players that, you know, have had some time. Like, Contrax was a really young player when he joined the team and then kind of slumped in his, like, second uh, splits in the LCS. I think for a lot of them, they just felt like they had something to prove. And all reports point to how close the team felt to each other. And I think in a long season where you cannot let yourself get discouraged, even when your start is as bad as 04. Just having the ability to kind of rally, be there for each other, and actually like figure out what you need to do rather than worrying about the stuff that you didn't do correctly was a big thing. So yes, there's a talent upgrade. Yes, I think in general they made huge infrastructure changes to facilitate all of this, but I think the longer the lifespan of League of Legends goes, the more we're learning that actually having teams and players and management that fit together and that like each other and that are willing to go Who through thought? crap to try and improve. <laughs> yeah, it matters a lot. It's crazy. Like, it's weird that it took us, you know, this many seasons to figure it out. But I think in a lot of ways, teams are learning that it's not just like the people on the, on stage at the front of the team that matter. It's everything behind it and how you approach each game. And I mean, even if this whole team gets along, a lot of the attention still goes to Froggen because yeah, it doesn't really matter uh, what the meta is. He always has these pocket picks, whether it's Karthus, uh, Velka, as we saw this weekend, or even Anivia, obviously, which is his staple going mm -hmm. back to the beginning of time, basically. Um, so how much of an advantage is just having Froggen and his unique champ pool going into the playoffs? I think it's actually a huge advantage. I, Froggen's thing to me has always been that whenever Froggen joins a team, and this was even true back in the days when he joined like CLG EU and was like one of the dominant mid laners in the early stages of competitive, Froggen is a player that if you like bend to his will in some ways and let him do the thing that he's best at and set him up well, he will absolutely hard carry a game for you. And yes, it's not like a traditional player, like you think of something like Jensen or Birksen, who are maybe more balanced players now, but obviously still individually very strong, but have evolved to be very well-rounded players throughout their careers. Froggen is good at a lot of different things, but the things that Froggen is good at are things that not many other players are good at. So it can, it can be frustrating sometimes, I think, if like, the metagame really suits a certain style and the, a player can't play it. But I think Froggen's actually flexible enough and is willing to try stuff that other people aren't and figure out a way to make it work. And then his team is actually willing to, you know, do the work with him and be like, okay, how do we make Velkos work in a team comp? How do we make Karthus mid work in a team comp? Like, Froggen is a big advantage if he's found enough picks and enough ways to approach the game that other teams aren't thinking about. If that's what your team has practiced, I think you're a huge threat in playoffs because 
you never know what Froggen and the rest of Golden Guardians are going to play next. And it's not like, even though it is a froggen centric team, the rest of his team can do a lot of heavy lifting as well. So I think it is a big advantage, obviously, as far as like, you, you look at all their talent across the board, making a big push given the top three in the league might be tough. But mm -hmm. I think as far as surprise and wow factor goes, Froggen actually has a lot of advantages moving yeah, into playoffs with his picks team. for picks you know it's picks that he knows how to use too so that's exactly that's no one else experience. has thousands of anivia games for frogging <laughs> yeah no exactly um time to put the caster prediction skills uh to test oh, no. here yeah so it's ggs fly quest in a best of five quarterfinals how do you see this one playing out oof i think it's kind of what we were talking about before with how are we expecting frogging to perform i think golden guardians have shown uh, a surprising level of consistency given mm -hmm. how they started the season, let's say, but I think towards the middle end, especially the end of the split, they looked quite a bit better. That being said, FlyQuest's story is also quite similar. I think both these teams can celebrate the fact that they've had really good years for the uh, franchises, which are relatively new to the league. Mm -hmm. And I think it will be a very close series. I think given that they've played games already, most people are probably predicting four or probably five games in this series. I think as far as performance goes though, yes, Golden Guardians, I think, have the ability to win. And if they're really playing their game and just on fire, I think they'll actually win relatively handily. But FlyQuest, again, have shown like a lot of creativity, a lot of resilience, just a lot of really good preparation. Even though I think in the middle of the split, there was a worry that FlyQuest maybe had been figured out. I think they've actually moved past that and grown even more as a team. So I think for consistency's sake, I think the prediction is FlyQuest, but I, it's probably going to be five games. It's the, yeah. one of the few series where I would say it's likely to go five games. Not more likely than not, but more likely than your average series to go five. And I think you can cheer for any team and, and be happy because right. it's very difficult to predict the winner. You on board with that, Matt? I think so. I mean, <laughs> it, it's definitely tough. We haven't really seen these two teams in the playoffs before, so it, yeah. it's going to be a, a lot of uh, you know inexperience on that on that stage. Obviously, yeah. they have players like Froggen and whatnot, but it's still going to be really tight. The thing is, I don't think the winner of this stands much of a chance against the, the Titans, that is TSM uh, yeah. <laughs> and Team Liquid anyway. So. Something we can all agree on there, I guess. <laughs> Rip them. But uh, all right, let's move on to uh, talk about to then Echo Fox versus CLG. This game decided who got the sixth and final playoff spot. Can you just walk us through the pressure that comes to a best of one to decide who's in and who's out? There's a lot on the line there. Yeah, it's hugely. I mean, anytime you play one game for all of the proverbial marbles, it's yeah. pretty tough. Like, uh, game five, Players in Game 5 series can speak to that, and certainly in this kind of best of one where it is your playoff hope now. I think the biggest thing is like any situation, just don't think about the fact that, oh, maybe if we'd done something different and won a game earlier in the season, mm -hmm. we wouldn't be in this situation. Just think about what you're going through now Head and just game, try, yeah. and try and play your best comp. I think Echo Fox actually have done a really good job ending the split by just being finding finally finding some consistency for themselves. Rush had a, like a, a very shaky start to the split for a jungler of his caliber. Then they brought in Panda towards the end of the season, who, I mean, probably just wasn't ready to play up from Academy. It is a, a pretty big leap for a lot of these players. Mm -hmm. And then Rush came back in and finally felt like he'd find, found, you know, just a, a lot more consistency and a lot more coordination with the team. Echo Fox, if you look at their drafts, they played almost exclusively some sort of mid to late game scaling and just played really reliable comps. And teams kind of threw themselves at Echo Fox and Echo Fox like, oh, yeah, this is fine. We'll take a fight. And now our Jinx comp that's supposed to win at 35 to 40 minutes is suddenly winning at 25 minutes because these are still mm -hmm. players that can, you know, execute on plays, especially when they're almost handed to them. So I think Echo Fox must have been feeling really good given the momentum they had and given how consistent they've been. For CLG, the pressure must have been massive. I mean, this is a team that has not... Uh, made playoffs or done well in playoffs for quite a while and they're one of the oldest organizations in the league they had a ton of roster changes they had massive coach changes with longtime coach six leaving and going to tsm so i think clg i mean they have a big fan base as well that are pretty critical of their team like a lot of big teams as it turns out but I think CLG might have been, I would guess they were feeling more pressure than Echo Fox, but again, you just have to rely on the veterans on your team and mm -hmm. the ability of your management to say, hey, don't think about it, just focus on this game, try and draft simply and, and play the way that you know best. Yeah, I mean, Echo Fox already was on that miracle run coming into week eight. Yeah. They went 4-0 to, to sneak into the playoffs, so very mm -hmm. impressive there. Um, you alluded to their, their late game compositions, and of course, in the first round matchup, they're going up against TSM, who is this team yeah. who has really been actually yeah. surprisingly aggressive in the early game. Um, so do you think that Fox has another layer to their, their gameplay that can actually help them out against TSM? You would think so. I just don't know how much time they've had to practice. Like, 
I would give a player like Rush or a player like Phoenix uh, good chances to make something happen, you know, in the earlier stages of the game. But when we saw Echo Fox trying to play more aggressively from the jungle early on, that's when the team had a lot of, like, dis-synergy, let's say, and Rush was kind of making those plays. It just made him look kind of silly. But clearly the team just wasn't on the same page with their jungler. So I would guess, I mean, they have limited prep time, but I would hope that they have more strategies to practice. Whether or not they'll feel comfortable playing them against a team that's as good in the early game as TSM is another matter entirely. I think they've done so well winning the way they have against good teams that they should just stick to their style initially. But coming into any best of five, you need to have your preparation needs to be deeper than a few comps. So I assume Echo Fox have other preparation, but whether or not it can be successful is. I think a tough ask versus a team like TSM. Yeah. Well, just for, for storylines for people looking from the outside in, then, like, you know, you hear a lot of talk about TSM. Even though they're third seed, though, are they the team to beat right now? Like, is this what everyone's got their eyes set on? I think coming into playoffs, yes. No one is going to discount Liquid. I think they're yeah. still default the favorites just because of how good they have looked every playoffs they've entered since kind of the, the new version of the team. Uh, started in franchising last year. But I think as far as recency goes, TSM absolutely look like the team to be. They're, they're on fire. I mean, you mentioned their early games. They've really amped up the way they're playing in the early stages. If you look through their earlier games, you might be like, hey, like, they didn't win that much. Their games were kind of long. It's like, were they trying something else? It's like, no, no, they were trying to do the same thing. They just hadn't figured out how to do it successfully yet. And now I think the team is really on the same page. Every piece feels like it's firing pretty consistently. I think Bjergsen and Sven are playing some of the best league uh, in their careers, and these are two players with extremely decorated resumes, so that's a pretty big ask. And it just feels like Akkadian and Broken Blade and Smoothie have finally gelled with the team, and TSM have just agreed on a way to play, whether that's Six saying, hey, I think we should play this way, and the team following suit, or if it's TSM just all being on the same page for the first time in what feels like a while. But yeah, as far as like second half records go, TSM clearly have the best. And even though we'll wait to see who they play off, uh, of the buy teams, I think TSM are a super scary team. I wouldn't fault people for putting them as a potential favorite given how good they've looked recently. And I mean, you look at TSM, it seems like everything that they've struggled with historically and people have memed them on, you know, like mm -hmm. having their jungler be a ward bot, um, having Bjergsen not roam, it all just seems fixed, which is, which is pretty crazy for, for TSM. Um, obviously, NA's apparent number one in Team Liquid has been in a bit of a slump. They've lost three straight games. Yeah. What do you think uh, is going on with Team Liquid right now? Or is it just, you know, they've already locked up everything there is, so they're, they're kind of taking it easy? Yeah, you still seem confident in Liquid. Yeah, I mean, there is a little bit of that where it's like, okay, well, they locked first with like three games to go, and then they lost three games. So realistically, how much does the team care? I think the reality is a team like Liquid is, has a lot of pride, especially you're the two-time defending champion. Like, you don't want to look weak coming into playoffs, especially when everyone's talking about the teams around you. So I think there's no way in my mind that Liquid are just like, ah, eh, whatever, like the games don't matter, let's not try. This is a, a team full of very competitive players. So, they, I mean, with the way they were playing, looked like they were playing and drafting, it did feel like the team was absolutely trying to win those games, if maybe taking risks that they wouldn't otherwise. I think if we think about Liquid's even earlier splits last year in 2018, they actually did have small slumps in both of those splits. It just felt like either the game changed and the meta didn't suit them and they were kind of scurrying to figure out what to do. And then by the time the end of the season and then playoffs rolled around, they'd figured it out. And then I think again uh, in summer, they had another slump, but it was even smaller. So there's definitely a small trend for this team dipping in performance at, at times, but they almost always recover and then smash everyone. I think the worry is that they've dipped at probably the worst time they possibly could. And yeah, when yeah. you have your players talking about slumping now, like that's not the place you want to be. Thankfully for Liquid, they have a bye, so a bye week, so maybe they can you know, use that time to prepare. They'll likely be playing C9 basically all of that week as far as scrims go, because of course they're the only other team with a bye. Mm -hmm. And if they're going to meet, they'll meet in the finals, given that they're on other sides of the bracket. So mm -hmm. that's a ton of good practice for a team like Liquid. And this is a team that has been so good at figuring out how to make stuff work. When I think about the start of the split and how clean their roster looked together despite the changes they had made, that to me was like, what is going on in like in the management here for this side? Because I wouldn't expect this team to gel as quickly as it did, but a testament to, again, the strength of their players and also the total infrastructure and training that Liquid have. I'm fully confident that Liquid will power back up to full, to full strength come their semifinal match, but I think there is certainly some doubt and it does feel like the at least the top three teams, if not all of the teams in playoffs, have a very legitimate shot at taking the title, which mm -hmm. hasn't been the storyline 
since Liquid took over the LCS. All right. Well, here it is. Uh, I, I, we jumped to, to Twitter. Sometimes we like uh, other people to write our questions for us. <laughs> so we got uh, Marcella Ferns uh, from Twitter uh, asks, uh, competitively, how is the LCS shaping up, and how will the top teams do internationally? Mm. Oh, everyone's favorite question. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. How will they do internationally? I mean, if we think about MSI, which is coming up, obviously only one team will go. I guess if people are predicting either TL, C9, or TSM to go, then those are pretty good teams to start with. TL, I think, uh, it's tough because they have effectively built themselves to be an international powerhouse. That's you know, been a commitment for a lot of the top teams that have dominated NA. They always want to do better because, as everyone knows, NA International has been a bit of a meme. <laughs> I think Liquid, like, roster-wise, this is one of the best, if not the best, single roster they've put together. Um, and the experience and what they've brought to this whole team in trying to win this split and then go be successful international. Liquid should be set up well, but it's really tough to say how they'll do unless until you get to the games. Like I'm confident that even like when you look at players like Double who's had recently good performances international, Jensen's been pretty consistently strong internationally. Call JJ obviously is hugely successful internationally. Impact's pretty consistent. X Smithy's really consistent. So I think Liquid are pretty safe if they make it to MSI and can compete internationally. And honestly, that's what the team sort of promised their fans they would do. So I know that anything less than a significantly better showing than they've had in the past will be a failure for Liquid. Mm -hmm. So I think, yes, that pressure is there for the team and that could be a problem. But as far as what they've committed themselves to and what they're seeking to do, I think they've visualized what, what they want to do internationally and I'm confident they'll be pretty good. For Cloud9, I think everyone's confident that whenever Cloud9 goes uh, across an ocean, apparently they just, yeah. you know, whatever they, whatever meal they have on the plane powers them up and they just, they just have a, 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 <laughs> Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> right? Just fly over there and they get for every game and they'll be good. Exactly. All right, man. Well, we're out of time. Face your time. Thank you so much for joining us today to break down all this craziness. Enjoy the playoffs, dude. My pleasure. I absolutely will. Thank you guys so much. There, now that uh, he's gone, Matt, is there anything you disagree with no, behind his back? Or is he on point? Absolutely not. Everything Pracy Time says is the word of God, so it's fine. That is, that is it? That is, it is definitive. Cool. Right. Well, we're not done here, because while the LCS was wrapping up the regular season, the LEC had a week off before playoffs. Before we chat about the first round matchups, let's check out who's taking part. Jumps in as well, he gets the smart, he steals it away. The slicing mouse from will hit on the three members, but already Odo is down. Momentum very low as well in the back side of the fight. Two kills, three kills for Splice. They take the Baron, they take everything away from Shao. Upset even jumps forward, maybe a little bit too risky from him. It's a double for Humanoid. Caps has the flank position, he's gone back. Need to teleport in soon because Caps is just gonna jump in. Surprise, says Caps. That's two down, a third to follow, and it's all Okami. He takes out one charge, he's on the fight. Can Kami get the boomerangs in? Can he turn it around for his team? The only man who's been on this team the whole time, it's coming! And it's a party for Splice! Cause they run through G2! Goes. Boxer jumps in, Kabashar flashes away straight away. Boxer with the chase, but here's Mowgli from the side. Great explosive cut from Nogan back, and Kabo can turn it back on the Boxer, that's one! Here we go, Jack Talk doubles up safe, and Gorilla jumping onto that back line, but the Kankton locks him in. Four man charm, though it's forbidden there with the shotgun, not quite. Unable to get in position in time, and already Kabashar is going on a killing spree. Mowgli forced out towards the bottom side, the round wall comes in, it takes two onto the back line, and Max all low. Forbidden chased out as well, Half Summer chased out by three players from Vitality. He's in the midst of them all, but he's done. And Vitality now, nine and four. They've hit the magic number. And they are pretty much guaranteed that playoff set. Ooh, Brembo manages to connect a full combo onto Soaz. Flash is available for Soaz. He's down to 100 HP. Slice and dice is not available just yet. One more hit for Brembo is all that's going to be needed. First blood. G2 are looking for the win. Can they pull it off? The round one. Once again, the Red Bull comes out. They wait for the next hit. The oh, no! Oh, no way! The next hit towers at the bottom side. G2 get the first one. The Red Bull is in the side. Get in the back door. Turn this one, but is he gonna go for it? He flashes in, he's trying to find it, he's trying to turn this game around for his team, he's gonna get one, he's gonna get two. As the is here, self-made available, period, coming in, perfectly timed, and he gets shut down on the dog game, running in, desperate to get something back, but crowd shot kills him, that's the quadra for Tristana. SK Gaming in their return to the highest level of European competition will make playoffs in their first split.
Okay, now, Matt, we've got two playoff series to talk about. We're going to start off, though, with Fnatic Vitality. Fnatic is definitely the hotter team going in, yes. but uh, give me the hot take on just the overall matchup here. So, yeah, I mean, Vitality is this team that's struggling right now. Jizuke mm -hmm. was away for a while with an illness, so he missed a couple games, a couple starts. Big oof. And big oof, yeah. yeah. And, of course, practice time with the team, right? So their struggles down the end, kind of expected. They lost mm -hmm. four of their last five, only beating Rogue, which is the worst team in the league, so it's not stellar results there. Whereas Fnatic, they've won like a ton down the stretch. Mm -hmm. I believe 8-0 to finish the, the regular season. That's not too shabby. Which is pretty damn good, right? Yeah. So it, it's the tale of two teams, the hot team on the on the winning streak and this team struggling down the stretch. Well, I'm just saying like overall then, like this with that scene right now, is it uh, is like the talent spread out or is like an 8-0 super surprising to I see mean, in that region? Right now, the LEC, all the, all the six teams <laughs> in the playoffs are Pretty damn good, yeah. I would say. I mean, compared to the LCS, I would say uh, the top six teams in Europe are probably all within the top four of the, the LCS. Uh -huh. um, so in terms of the, the talent, I think there's more of it in the LEC, mm -hmm. which leads to all, all these teams being really close together in the standings. And I mean, you look at some of the people on Fnatic, I mean, they've been stellar for so long, but they yeah. lost caps. In comes Nemesis all of a sudden. You really don't lose too much in the Fnatic roster, surprisingly. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously terrible start for them but they, they built it back around and it, it's they've done incredible stuff Roxa has been able to kind of find his form again that he had in Worlds 2018 yeah. getting up to the finals and they look like that top caliber team and I think it'll be pretty convincing against Vitality because really? uh, Vitality is this team they do crazy things and think of it this way Fnatic chose Vitality right they were yeah. the third seed they wanted Vitality instead of SK they, know, they have their number pretty much They're so like, they we think got they know how up. to take them right uh, they're, they know they're going to do wild stuff, so if you just game plan for Vitality, more predictable, even though they do crazier things, uh, it, it's going to be this dynamic where Fnatic just feels like they, they know what to do. So it should be pretty one-sided. Do you think, do you, think uh, you know, coming up with wild strategies, though, could, and unpredictability could end up being a downfall? Absolutely, it could be. But I, I think they take that gamble because okay. um, especially Vitality's bot lane is one where they get very aggressive and sometimes, you know, that, that hurts them. Sometimes it yeah. doesn't work out the way they want to. Um, and it's just one of those things where sometimes you want to go against a team that makes mistakes. Vitality definitely makes mistakes and Fnatic mm -hmm. feels like they can punish it. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make you pick something here. Chat, let me know if you agree with them, but you gotta pick a winner for this one. Fnatic or Vitality, who's moving on to the next round? Fnatic and 3-0. 3-0? Real quick. Real, that's it. No, no, that's it. Like, the, just no competition at all? No. Like, it's not even going to be like a close 3-0? Like, do you think it's going to be just an easy, like, we're half asleep playing this match? No, let's just skip to the semis. Fanatic <laughs> Jesus. Let, let's all right. It. Okay, let's hit, let's hit the other playoffs here now. We got Splice and SK Gaming. Can you break that one down for us? Absolutely. So SK is this team, again, they've, they've been on a nice winning streak. They barely mm -hmm. got into the playoffs after a crazy tiebreaker. And their matchup against Splice is going to be a very interesting one because it's going to be a tale of can Splice shut down Selfmate, who has been mm -hmm. the, the story of SK's entire season. Mm -hmm. And I feel like they'll be able to because over a best of five if self-made is the only win condition that SK really has you've got to be able to have some sort of game plan to shut them down and I think Splice with Zerze he's no slouch of his own yeah so I think that they'll be able to come up with this idea and system not necessarily to shut them down but at least slow them down get in there invade uh, roam as a team into the enemy jungle and just just try to stop him from doing what he does okay that's what I'm gonna say what is the game plan then I mean like if and is that gonna take away from your play style if your whole game plan is to shut down one guy like are you gonna lose out on any other factors then like you could be putting resources into to a degree but I think splice even if they screw up that that early game and trying to shut down self-made they'll be able to adapt because of what they have at 80 carry in Kabe okay. he's yeah. shown time and time again that even if there's a tough team fight or these close situation Kabe's the guy you want in the these late game team fights, mm -hmm. as opposed to Crown Shot, who has shown some good things for SK, but you still have to go with Kabe and some of the things that he's done. So I think Splice will be able to slow down self made enough that they can just get into the late game without losing too much of an early game lead and then take over. Okay, I want to find out again, chat, if you agree with him, but Splice also just beat SK game in week eight. Will they be able to do the repeat? I think so. This, is, this series is a lot more interesting than Fnatic and Vitality, mm -hmm. so I think it'll be four games for Splice. I do think okay. that SK is still this rookie team. Like, I know they spent a lot of time together in other leagues, but they're still new to the scene, and I think Splice has more veteran players uh -huh. in the playoffs. That's huge. All right, one last order of business here. Uh, we need to hand out an MVP for Week 9 of the LCS. Matt, who gets it? 
It's got to go to Nice Boy Rush. He nice was, Boy Rush. He was absolutely killing it for Echo mm -hmm. Fox. And I mean, whenever you go on a four-game winning streak uh, after coming back off of a, a little break because, you know, mm -hmm. the team benched him, tried some other guys in the jungle, got him some reflection time, and he just came out stellar. Three games on Jarvan. Sometimes you just got to meditate, you know? You got to meditate. Back and think about it. And I mean, Fox took down uh, a couple of Titans in Cloud9 yeah. in, in Team Liquid. And of course, a huge game against CLG to come out on top, even though he was getting super punished in the early game. He just held on, didn't die on Sejuani and then mm -hmm. and came out deathless at the end of the day. So very impressed by Rush, and I think he's going to be huge going into the playoff series against TSM. Hey, you convinced me. Rush it is, and we'll have to wait until next weekend to see if we can pull off the upset over TSM. Not only are the LCS playoffs next weekend, but also the LEC playoffs, so make sure you tune into those. There should definitely be some epic best of fives. Make sure you all tune in tomorrow as well. Ron Lee and AJ Fry are going to be chatting about the Overwatch League Stage 1 playoffs, so you don't want to miss it. Until then, make sure you hit us up on our socials at Squad State, and we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.